Many doctors and patients are seeking out a holistic approach to wellness. Lucky for us, Ayurvedic medicine has over 3,000 years of a head start doing just that. Originating in India, Ayur meaning life, and Veda meaning science or knowledge. 3,000 years, that leaves a lot of catching up to do, and, and I'm really excited about what we're going to talk about today. So today we brought in, as we always do, one of the best, Dr. Nancy Lonsdorf, who's among the nation's most prominent Ayurvedic doctors, physician, author, and educator specializing in, specializing in women's health, brain health, and executive wellness. Dr. Lonsdorf is leading the way in integrating remember that word, integrating Eastern and Western medical traditions. She's going to help us. And I believe me, we all need this at this point, relieve pain and stress and bring balance to our bodies using methods proven effective for over 3000 years. So without uh, more hesitation, welcome Dr. Lonsdorf. Thank you, Dr. Mike. I'm really excited to be here. I'm thrilled that you're here. Let's actually start with your training. Um, you, now, you, you went to medical school at Johns Hopkins, is that right? That's correct. Now, your residency, which was at Stanford, uh, two amazing, amazing places, by the way, that was in psychiatry. Is that right? Correct. Okay. So f from there, all of a sudden, t take me through that sort of journey. Like you're, I can imagine, like I have obviously lots of colleagues and friends who are psychiatrists, and they do traditional psychiatry. So at what point did a light bulb go off? And you're like, wait a minute, I'm missing. I, I, take us through that. Well, I started out, I think I was a little bit of a rebel or a kind of independent <laughs> thinker to begin with. So I like you already. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a teenager, you know, I started to get interested in vitamins and nutrition and diet. And then I learned transcendental meditation when I was 16. And I, I was fascinated by the mind and the idea that we have more mental potential than we use. So I, I dived into that and I, I wanted to be a doctor. I, that preceded everything. So I thought, well, I wanna be a doctor who really helps people get healthy. And I'd love to use you know, what I've learned about meditation and diet and all that, mostly mind body, I was thinking so. When I applied to Johns Hopkins Medical School in my interview, you know, they asked me what I was interested in. And I said, this was 1978. I said, well, I want to study mind body medicine. And I don't even know that it barely existed. I, I, I was going to say they were probably like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Took me anyway, you know, it's pretty amazing. That's all. So you, I mean, at a young age, you're already kind of, you know, in tune with a lot of this stuff. Like what? From your upbringing, what what made you go that direction? I mean, I think that's that's interesting. I think back when I was sixteen, the last thing on my mind was vitamins and minerals and health. I was just probably much like you, a bit of a rebel, running around doing probably things I wasn't supposed to be doing. But what, like, what I I see that as a sense of maturity and self awareness. Like, what led to that at such a young age, or do you know? <laughs> I think it was destiny, Mike. I grew up in uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin, and I can tell you, I didn't, I didn't even know what a massage was, you know, back then. I never heard of it. And right. Never heard of health food, and you know, uh, just grew up on, you know, SAD, standard American diet. But I, I don't know. I guess it was just destiny. It was, it was mostly my fascination, my idea that, you know, there's more to health, there's more to the mind than we know. And I think when you start exploring with meditation, you become open to all sorts of things, you know, it really opens your mind to other dimensions, so, so to speak. Yeah. And so you brushed by this and I'm going to go back and revisit it, but the standard American diet, sad, and it is sad and the acronym is sad for obvious reasons but that's for another another discussion okay now here's what i want to do because i, I know people are out there saying okay you know this is a, another one of these terms that they may be unfamiliar with now we hear terms like alternative medicine we integrative medicine holistic medicine so give us a little sort of 101 on these terms and where does where does ayurvedic fit into that this you know concoction because there's so many things you hear these days 
Right. Well, integrative refers to an integration of the conventional Western objective medical science kind of approach to health, as well as something that's more uh, natural or holistic or taking into account, you know, person's lifestyle and their diet and their mental state and their spiritual well-being. So I would say it's combining the so-called holistic with the Western medical. Although, you know, these terms are getting blurred. I was on the Mayo Clinic website the other day and they were talking about how they do holistic health. <laughs> <laughs> what a joke. Um, you know, you know, but they people know are getting carried they, away. They know what people want to hear and what they want today, you know, and, and all power to them. The more they try to be holistic, it's only going to help people's, you know, health and their outcomes. But I think they have... Um, you know, it's still a pretty limited approach in Western medicine when they try to be integrative. Um, I, I think holistic just, you know, it means looking at the whole picture. Why does this person have these symptoms? Right. What's going on for them? What are their exposures, their risks, their lifestyle, their environment that could have created um, this problem for them? Instead of just saying like, you know, you train the same way I did and people ask you, doctor, why do I have rheumatoid arthritis? Or why do I have, you know, irritable bowel? Or why do I have migraine or headaches or whatever? You know, we just say, well, we don't really know. Right. You probably have a genetic tendency for it. And, you know, we know certain things might make it worse, like stress. But other than that, we don't really know what to tell you. Yeah, it's interesting because, uh, you know, I've always been, and I was speaking to the team earlier about this, you know, so we go back 3,000 years ago, right? People talk about the pendulum of, of health and wellness and treatment. You know, 3,000 years ago, this kind of stuff was being utilized and with obvious effectiveness. Well, then along came maybe big pharma and all these other things. The pendulum swings the entire opposite direction. And I feel because there's so much, you know, policy and politics and, and, and money behind it, it has this tendency to maintain that pendulum going the exact opposite way. And hey, we just want a little balance. And, and I tell my patients all the time, there's, there's no limit into all of the things that may help a particular disease entity. It, it just, you have to look at diet, you have to look at stress, you have to look at people's upbringing. You know, we talk about the ACE score. ACE score. I worked with uh, uh, Dr. Vince Folletti, who came up with the ACE study that looks at, at adverse childhood. But I mean, there are so many things. But, you know, in med school, uh, you know, I was in med school in, in the early 90s. It's like they cram all these stuff down your throat, but we didn't. Have, we never talked about nutrition and, and a lot of that stuff. Now I think, thank God, here in 2020, 2021, we are getting to that. But it's it's just about looking at the whole body, which is why I think the, the whole principles, which what I want to explain next, the principles of Ayurvedic medicine are so. Let's now dive into it. I think we have a little bit of an idea, a good idea that integrative medicine sort of brings an integration of Eastern and Western. And then we go a dive a little deeper into Ayurvedic medicine. Let's talk about some of those principles. Yeah, Ayurveda brings a whole new dimension to even natural medicine, holistic medicine, it, or functional medicine. Ayurveda has its own way of looking at the body and it's totally compatible with Western medicine and functional medicine. It just has another language and it looks at more connectedness, different ways of connecting the body. So let me just give you an example. In Western medicine, we look at the organ systems and they're made up of tissues and they're made up of molecules and cells and all that. And, and, and then we have a, a doctor for every system. So we've got the cardiovascular system, we got a right. cardiologist, GI, we got the GI doctor. So um, in Ayurveda, it looks at, well, what is common to all the cells, all the tissues, all the organs, all the organ systems? What are the commonalities? What ties them together? And it describes three, I like to call them super systems. And those are, um, three basic things anything needs to be alive. And uh, sometimes I play a little guessing game with my, my patients. You know, what are the three things you need to be alive? And maybe they say, well, you need to eat. 
And I say, okay, so you need metabolism, right? You eat to create energy. And then they say, well, you know, you've got to breathe. And of course, that means you got to deliver that oxygen to the brain and everywhere. You got to have circulation. You got to right. have movement flow. And then you got to have this energy production going on everywhere. <laughs> and, and what else do you need? Well, you know, you kind of need something to hold it together. You need a body, right? You need right. the muscles and the tissues and the skin. So Ayurveda says uh, those are all governed in a sense by their own software program. And it calls that a dosha. And it says V, P, and K. You've got a V, Vata, a P, a Pitta, and a K, Kapha, super system. And each super system has its own like software. And it's got to be, the software is perfect or almost perfect. If we have a genetic problem, maybe there's a glitch in the software. But, um, you know, overall, if we feed the body right and we give it the right sleep and the right time and the right stress reduction and all that and exercise then the the physical system is programmed basically to stay healthy right and and as long as you take care of your body right you have to give it proper fuel you have to move it you have to hydrate it you have to relax it I, i've always talked about my, and i do i talk about with my patients every day, I say this multiple times, it's five principles the way I see them, who am I? But you, it, it's nutrition, it's exercise, it's hydration, it's stress management and avoidance of smoking. Uh, to me, those five elements, really you're putting your best foot forward. Now, accomplishing those five things, easier said than done. But it, I, what I love is that I think, listen, that whole saying different strokes for different folks, right? Different things work for different people. And I think taking a, a, an approach that involves every possibility to heal mentally, physically, spiritually, whatever it is, why wouldn't people do that? And does, doesn't that drive you crazy sometimes that people are so just like narrow-minded and this is how you do it? It's like, I mean, I don't get it. What are, your, what are your thoughts? I'm sure you see a variety of patients that come in, some skeptics, some, you know, maybe not so much. I mean, how do you approach people like this? Well, I have to tell you, I'm really, really lucky because by the time people walk through uh, an office door that says, you know, Dr. Alonzo of Ayurvedic Integrative Medicine, you know, <laughs> they know what they're in for, you know, they pretty much want it. So, but, you but know, don't, and don't you think you would rather some of these people have come, you know, at the beginning because it's like they've exhausted so many things and God knows how much money and they're no better off. In fact, they may be worse off because they're driving themselves crazy with all of everything that they've gone and they have no answers. So they get to you and they're just kind of like almost giving up in a sense. Well, sometimes people say, yeah, you're my last hope here. Or, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, or, you know, I wish I'd come to you a long time ago. You know? Exactly. And, uh, it's the power of having this deeper knowledge and Ayurveda is like an extra power that um, identifies, like you were saying, different strokes for different folks. So Ayurveda is extremely personalized medicine, you know, and it's not just, okay, everybody should do paleo or everybody should do keto or everyone should X, Y, or Z or exercise in, um, you know, an interval training, such right. and such. It's like everybody's different and Ayurveda has, it, it understands that there's people that are dominant in the movement principle, those thin people who are never gain weight and they eat, you know, like a bird or they eat a lot or they just, they're always in motion and they're kind of vivacious. And then you got the, the met metabolic people, the pitta, and they're like driving, hard driving and they have <laughs> endless energy and they run companies and they can't stop going like an Elon, Elon Musk or something. And then you've got the kapha people the, the structural people, they're like, they're heavier. They got heavy muscles and bones and they tend to be kind of slower to take up new things, but they're really stable. And they're the people you go to because you know, you can tell them anything and it won't phase them. And they'll, they'll be like generous to you in their time. And it's like, we have the, and then we've got combination types, but Ayurveda looks at not only the body, we call that the mind body type, but we look at, well, what's out of balance? Did your nervous system, circulatory system governed by this vata go out of balance, well, then it manifests in certain symptoms. So let me give you an example. Like a lot of people today have gas and bloating. It's like, you know, very common people right. come in. With that. And, you know, it, 
it can be complex, especially like you said, if they didn't come to you right away, you know, their 50 years of eating bad and, and abusing their body with lots of antibiotics or something. So then you got to piece to get, you got to sort out and, and address each element, their microbiome, and maybe there's a certain probiotic, whatever, but there's this Ayurvedic dimension. So I'll give you an example of a pretty simple one. Yeah, let's go through an example because I think people are probably like, oh, wait a minute, this is speaking to me. So now I want I want everybody to pay attention now. Here it comes. Okay, so I'll give you an example. There was a lady about 40 years old and she came to see me um, and she's a radio, sh she's a radio show host. You know, they had radio shows. Now, now you've got podcast hosts, but she's right. a health, health show and uh, she was doing a health show and she came to me and she said, you know, I was diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome after lunch every day. I get all this bloating and gas and I went to the bathroom and I just don't feel good. And I've been suffering like this for years. And, you know, I don't want to take the drugs they give me because, you know, they have side effects and that's not really addressing the cause. So I evaluated her. I took her pulse, which we can talk about later. That's an Ayurvedic way of gaining additional information about an individual and their state of balance. Anyway, and I said, well, you have a vata imbalance, we say. So you have gas bloating. And what are you eating? I asked for lunch. And she said, oh, well, I eat really healthy. I have this big salad and it's only fresh vegetables. It's all organic and blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, actually for your type, a lot of raw vegetables can aggravate your uh, digestion. Right. So even though it seems really great, raw diet and everything for you, for you, you need cooked vegetables for lunch. And you should put these little spices on like cumin and fennel, which help your digestion and calm things down and some nice oils, like a good olive oil. So she said, okay, I'll do it. And then she came back for her next visit. And I said, well, how's it going? She said, I did just what you said. I started having a cooked lunch. And she said, within a week, I had no symptoms. Wow. I had the symptoms since. And then I followed up with her years later. And she said, no, it went away. It was, it really wasn't IBS. It was a vata imbalance, like your Ayurveda said. And I just needed to match the, the food to my, my needs. So, you know, a lot of people, and I, I would imagine... And again, I practice Western medicine, but I'm very open to everything. You know, I, I myself have had my share of health problems and I do acupuncture. I've gone to a chiropractor. I, you know, my significant other, she has trained in integrative medicine. So she's always on me about try this and try that. She's family medicine trained, but she did additional training uh, in Arizona with uh, Andrew, Dr. Wow, Andrew Wow. So she's very much in touch with a lot of these things. And it's been helpful for me, not only for my own health, but sharing with my patients. But a, you know, a patient like what you said has probably gone to their regular doctor. They've had CAT scans, ultrasounds, every blood work, and then they are just left with, well, there's nothing wrong with you. And that's got to drive people berserk. I mean, it drive me nuts. So I think it's important you know, one of the things I do with my patients is journaling. I think a 14 day journal tells you a lot about a lot. And I, I think one of the problems, and I'm curious as to what you think is just with the internet and with Google and with all of these things, there's so much information. It's overwhelming for people. So they get confused naturally. I, I mean, how do you address, how do you tell somebody, you know, that's just overwhelming themselves, you know, their own doing, but how do you get them past that and, and sort of weave through those weeds, so to speak? Well, again, I'm kind of lucky because by the time people decide they're going to come and see me, they've decided they want to do what I tell them to do because usually right. they're uh, pulling their hair out. So I, I've had enough of this. I've just, I can't figure out what's right for me. And I've tried all these things. So they're really relieved to just have me take the pulse, have me tell them, well, this is what I find from Ayurveda and let's do some, you know, tests, see if you're low in minerals or, or vitamins and let's right. look at the microbiome. Maybe you're, maybe you have some really bad bacteria or yeast or something and we'll address that. So then they get a program that's exactly precisely like tailored to their needs it's customized and then um like i think you and most doctors um who practice this kind of medicine if the patient actually does what you tell them you know our favorite <laughs> patient is the one who's a doctor i'll do whatever you tell me right i love that you know compliance loves, compliance yeah. compliance because then they actually 90 percent of the time they get better yeah yeah, I do. I, and you know, I think, and I tell people, I think that the internet 
whatever you know website you want to use to go to for information i tell my patients come to me first let me give you an idea of what i think is going on let me give you a diagnosis and then i'm going to give you some good websites to go to to sort of investigate further because there's so much information out there i mean i don't know everything and you know there's so much out there that i think people you know right away and i tell them look websites want to point you towards exciting stuff so you know, things like, you know, cancers and bad stuff like that. But the reality of it is when you come in with your diagnosis after spending 30 minutes on the, on a, you know, the internet, it's, it's really, it causes people to struggle. And I, and I tell them, I'm not saying stay off the internet. I'm saying, come to me, let me give you an idea of what I think you have and why. And now I want you to go research and learn more about it. So I think what you do is, it's such a valuable commodity and it's yet another sort of avenue for people to explore when things aren't, you know, quite getting better or as good as they want to be. And it's not to knock Western medicine. I'm a Western medicine guy. I'm not knocking my own people. I'm just saying, Hey, we all have a, a, a place. We all have a role in this. And I think it's just learning more. I mean, God, there's so much to learn, which is one of the things I love about interviewing individuals like you, because I learn so much and I, and I hope that our conversation leads to that. Now I want to go down because this is, I, I gotta be honest. One of the most exciting things, the interesting things that I find is the pulse. Let's talk a little bit about what you gain from the pulse and let's kind of share with our listeners what that is exactly. This is fascinating. Yeah. Well, it's just taking the pulse here at the radial artery. I just take the person's pulse and uh, it's a traditional trained uh, method. And I use these middle three fingers and basically I feel at four different levels, very light pressure, a little deeper, kind of medium deep, and then all the way down to right where it's about to block the artery, you know, all the way down to the deep. Gotcha. And every, every level tells uh, the doctor something uh, different. And actually, you can learn it pretty fast, uh, Dr. Mike. You can learn it in a weekend. I've taught um, hundreds of doctors pulse and, and the Ayurvedic in, in a weekend, not the whole, but, you know, the basics. And right. they pick it up so fast. In fact, now I even with, with telemedicine, I can take somebody's pulse if they're across, halfway across the world just by I tell them how to put their fingers on and I ask them questions. And I get a lot of information from that because I've taught it so many times. Right. So right. Anyway, you know, in the light level of the pulse, you find out a lot about kind of their uh, current state of immediate state of balance. Like maybe if they rush their lunch and they're kind of nervous, there'll be certain waveforms that show on the surface that tell me, oh, they're kind of nervous or their digestion's being a little disturbed from rushing, or um, maybe they're um, irritable and that'll show up on the surface. And then you, and, and sometimes also inflammation will show up. And then you press a little deeper and then you get localization of different parts of the body. That's called the subdivision of the dosha level. So you can find, okay, well, they have, um, they have this anxiety, but now I see, oh, there's also tension. Maybe there's tension in the neck or right, the back right. or their elimination feels like it's blocked or their liver is hot. Like maybe they're eating a lot of bad foods or they're drinking too much or their emotions are all disturbed and they're like, uh, maybe they have this ACE, adverse child events, and they're kind of always emotionally stressed out. Right. Or their joints are getting dry or their joints are inflamed. You can tell all that on the second level of the pulse. The deeper level, you find out about their metabolism, like if their their bones are hungry for for calcium and not getting nourished, or their um, their digestion is not really pulling the nutrients from the food, or if their um, fat and sugar metabolism is starting to get all clogged, like they're heading down the way of diabetes, heart disease. That all shows there, and then the deep level tells us about their overall strength. Like, are, do they have good constitution? Are they, is their body fighting to rebalance itself or is it just kind of getting hammered by stress and it's kind of struggling? It's probably so, the latter for everybody. Myself. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised. Oh, I'm, not sure. I'm a mess. <laughs> now, let's not even go there. And deep down, we feel that find that power of the healing nature of the body working away, trying, trying to right the wrong. So. So what about let's let's kind of talk about the obvious, which is stress. 
and how our bodies respond to stress. Now, I'll, I'll give you an example of me. Again, let's make this all about me because I'm a mess. Uh, you know, when I'm, I'm fortunate, I, I guess I'm fortunate. When I'm stressed, the two things I do is I don't eat and I exercise like a maniac. Now, that's good if you're trying to lose weight, but it's not necessarily good mentally. I mean, when I'm under stress, I can easily drop a ton of weight, you know, with people going through this COVID and the coronavirus and this whole thing, most people have gained weight. I, and I've lost a bunch because I'm, I'm a nervous wreck. So we're all different. We all manage stress different. What are some of the, you know, what's your experience with stress and the different stress types? And, and what are some of the things you people can take away from this, myself included? <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, I, I, there's uh, three stress types, according to Ayurveda, or I've, I've operationalized it that way. You know, there's there are these three types we talked about, the V and the P and the K, the movement type, the metabolism type, and the stress the stability type. And um, if a person is anxious, uh, they some people respond by worrying a lot and getting anxious and, and maybe panicked. I've had plenty of patients who came to me this last year with panic that they'd never had before. And we say that's an imbalance in vata. So what we do is we, we do just like we did with a lady with a gas, we have the diet be nice and warm and cooked and well spiced and lots of soups and um, soothing food. And, but we also, they need really regular routine, certain herbs like um, go-to cola, brahmi, ashwagandha, valerian. Those are all traditionally used in Ayurveda to kind of calm the nervous system. And right. Sit. And they, they really help. I have patients who take something called Worry Free, which is by company is called VPK. And they take that every day and they said it really smooths them out. So, um, and by the way, I don't work for them. <laughs> but, it, <laughs> you know, they're, they're, but these these often Ayurveda puts these herbs together and it says that when they're working together synergistically, right. they work better. So then there's the 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 middle type the metabolic type or pitta and they are the hard driving people and when they go out of balance they usually get angry and aggressive and edgy and short tempered and pushy and what know? are you trying to say <laughs> uh, so far i'm two for two i don't know if we're one or the other but i got two under my belt <laughs> so yeah so this is the this is the pitta type and what they need to do a of all things, they need to avoid alcohol. That will really make them worse. And caffeine, caffeine immediately. Oh my gosh. That Which will... are probably two things that people go to. Like the two things you're telling them to avoid. They're like, what are you kidding? What are you talking, kidding me? Like that's the two things I go to most. So no wonder why I messed up. Yeah, yeah. Because the, the, the alcohol has these, these bi metabolic byproducts that are, are irritating and toxic and they aggravate the liver and they cause inflammation. They disturb sleep. So then the person doesn't dream as well and they don't get rid of the emotional stress that REM sleep will provide us. Right. Of emotional stress. And then their liver gets irritated and then they get, you know, an, an inflamed tendency in the whole body. And that aggravates further their irritability, according to Ayurveda. So vicious cycle. And caffeine, yeah, one of my, one of my uh, colleagues said that her husband worked for one of these people that we say is a pitomaniac. Like he's really hard driven and he come into the office and push everyone around and get them, you know, grumpy and get them all working hard. And they decided they were going to start cutting his morning coffee, which they were asked to make. Oh. And so after about a week, did he, he, know? he didn't know for about two weeks. And I guess he, that he, and, and he was so mellow and they were so relieved and then he, <laughs> oh. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it, it can really, those things can really affect us. So those people need to have a really healthy diet. Hydrate. You mentioned hydration. They need to uh, my biggest pet water. peeve. Yeah. Yep. Because they're fiery. It's like fire needs water to keep it under control. They really need a lot of water and they have to avoid anything impure and toxic. Like I mentioned those, you know, favorites of alcohol and caffeine, but you know, just really good food. They got, they got to stay away from the fried stuff and, you know, skip on all that sugar and everything. They just Let's have to vegetables. Let me ask you a little bit about 
the executive wellness transformation. I, I want people to know a little bit about this because, I, listen, I, quite honestly, all of these things that you're telling us are helpful for anybody and everybody. You know, life is difficult. Life is hard. I, I say that all the time and I throw it out there. But when I say it, I think people just like laugh it off like, ah, ha, ha, yeah, life's hard. But I, like, I really mean it deep in my heart and my mind and my soul. Life is hard. It is difficult. You know, I think back to the days of like Little House in the Prairie with Michael Landon and how simple things were. You know, there was no Internet issues for Michael Landon. It was just simple, you know, and lo and behold, we've moved now in time. And don't get me wrong. I think it's great. We're able to do this show and to communicate and express all this information to people and get it out there through technology. But technology can bite you in the butt at the same time point. So talk a little bit about what what this executive wellness transformation is about, because I think it's important. Yeah, that's uh, a program that I put together to pull all the different um, approaches that I've trained in from Western medicine, functional medicine, nutrition, and Ayurveda, and do a really comprehensive evaluation for a person coming in where we look at all that. I have them fill out extensive uh, forms before they come about not just their medical history and their lab work and all, but also like their lifestyle and exactly what they eat and when they eat and when they go to bed and what they, how they deal with their electronics, as you're saying. And, and uh, even Ayurvedic things like you know, which direction do you sleep with your head to the west or the head to the east? I mean, there's actually some research that shows it influences our cortisol level, how we sleep. So even directionality is part of Ayurveda. But anyway, we, we take into account lots of different details. And then, um, when, then when they come, I take their pulse, I add that information in and everything that they tell me about their issues and what has been done. And then we create a a customized program for them that addresses, you know, it looks for any underlying causes. Maybe they need to do some more, you know, lab work, like gut work or, or look at their vitamins and minerals and all that. And then we put together a customized program that uh, addresses what's really important for them. Because not everybody needs a lot of lab work, you know. Right. You know, Ayurveda is enough. And some people are really complex and they need three or four approaches. Yeah, you know, and I that it's so true. And I and I just tell my patients, you have to really consider you have an open mind and take a look at at everything. Because we said this earlier, right, different strokes for different folks. And I think self realization, you know, one of the tools I use with my patients, I call it m and m, which is mindfulness and motivate. This is my own thing. It's called mindfulness and motivation tool. And basically what it what I tell them is before you do or not do, think about what your motivation is for doing or not doing. And, you know, it's, for example, like before you sit down and eat this unhealthy meal, why do you want to be healthy or do you want to be healthy? Is it for yourself? You want to look good. You're going to retire. You want to travel you're, for your kids, your grandkids, and then make the decision that that just five to 10 seconds of mindfulness goes such a long way and gives us insight into ourselves. And, and I also find journaling so helpful. People do without recognizing or realizing what they're doing or going to do, whether it's food or behavioral, you know, not exercising or smoking or whatever it is, right? So I think it's important. And I think all of these things you do, I love the greatest hits, the best of, as you put it, because I think it's a one-stop shopping place to come to, to you and say, gosh, Let's take a look at everything. And I mean, you've trained at some of the greatest places you could imagine. And then you have all this other experience. I, I just think it's a good way to approach things. And obviously, it's been a, a tremendously wildly successful for you. On your website, I understand there are some quizzes that people can take to just kind of give some self. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I created a couple of quizzes to just introduce people to Ayurveda and give them something really practical that can make a difference for their life very quickly. So there are just like five questions on each quiz. There's a stress quiz to find out your stress type. And once you submit your results, it will send you a, a recommendation tip once a week for six weeks. Nice. 
Yeah, so you have a little time to integrate it and it tells you why that's being recommended and gives you some little recipes and stuff here and there. And then there's one for digestion and it you know gives tips for the three different types of digestive imbalance. The, the gassy bloated one, the acidic refluxing uh, hot acid one, and then the heavy sits there, you know, digestion that people just say, you know, I'm still digesting three hours later and it sits in my stomach. <laughs> so there, there are Ayurvedic remedies for all those. I mean, the body's so complex and there is so much to know. And, and you mentioned this at the beginning of the show, which was sometimes we don't always have answers for everything. Yeah, you know, people and I think of over my career and I think of just stories that you hear about on the news of, of children, right? Little kids getting sick with bad stuff, cancers and stuff. And it breaks your heart. I mean, it, when you see young people or kids or anybody, really, whether you're 110 years old, the human life is precious. And when it's not good, it, it's it's kind of a bummer. It really is. And and I, I feel for these people and, and you see these things, but we don't all have all the answers. But, you know, leave no stone unturned, right? Really take a look at what what's out there. And I think someone like you is is such it's such a joy to speak with you, but it's so insightful for me. And I hope for other people to recognize that there are a lot of options out there. And I think we need to to really look into them and, and exercise some of them. Well, that's beautifully said, Dr. Mike, and I share with you that, you know, that commitment. And I think that anybody with a really deep desire to be healthy, and if they go to someone who's basically qualified, you know, they're, they're going to get some improvement if they really apply themselves. As you said, you know, if they just uh, optimize their diet in whatever way they know best, you know, that's going to help something. Right, right. You start going to bed earlier, get more sleep you know, turn off the computer earlier. They're going to get some benefit from that. So. Well, I can't thank you enough. I, I could talk to you forever for selfish reasons, but <laughs> because uh, I, I, uh, I, I may need to come visit you because I, I just, I love what you're doing. I think it's, again, it's another avenue. It's another way to address this very complicated thing that uh, we call a human being and life. So Thank you for sharing everything, your expertise, your your efforts and your hard work and commitment to this. Um, you're making the world a better place. I, and uh, I thank you for that personally. Oh, well, thank you. And likewise. So where can we send people? Where can I find you is what I'm asking. <laughs> where okay. can we uh, where can we send people? How do, how do we get a hold of you? How do, can people get in touch with you? Uh, well, you can go to my website and then all my contact information is there. The quizzes are there. The list of my books are there. Um, it's, it's either Dr. Lonsdorf, D-R, Lonsdorf, L-O-N-S-D-O-R-F, or it's uh, Dr. Nancy Health. Like I like that. Health. Yeah, drnancyhealth.com. Well, thank you. That's it, everybody. A lot of good stuff there. Great, great stuff. Um, now for the weekly RX, you know, I think about this a lot because there's so much good information, but I, I think one of the main things we need to think about is we're all different. We're all put together different, whether it's how we're raised, whether it's the food we eat, our culture, socioeconomic, there are so many elements to our wellness and have an open mind about how you approach your wellness. You know, the other thing is that, and I said this, and, you know, I, I say this a lot, but I really mean this passionately, and that's life is hard. Life is difficult. There are so many distractions and so many things, but you got to take care of your body. You have to take care of yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually. And lastly, never give up. Don't give up. Uh, every life on this planet is precious, and the loss of life is absolutely the worst thing anybody could go through but never give up because there is always a solution it's just about finding what works for you so that's it for today don't forget to subscribe for free download and listen to wellness inc with me dr mike moreno on apple podcasts or wherever you listen follow me on social media at the 17 day diet